it's an amazing conversation. It's going to be good, y'all. It's going to be like good, good, good. So I'm telling you, I'm super excited. And I know Dr. Eddie is as well. If you guys don't already know, Dr. Eddie Connor Jr. is a literally, is it 13 or 14 now um, in terms of book, author books? 14, yeah. It's Yep, 14 now. And he is a New York Times best-selling author. Come on here. We balling up in here. That's what's going on right now with Dr. Eddie Connor Jr. Hey, my beautiful cousin, Joy Daly. Thank you so much for joining. I love you so much. He is phenomenal. He has the actual Eagles Academy. It's formerly the Relationship Academy, but now it's the Eagles Academy. And he's broadened that actual spectrum in terms of the people that he can reach. He uh, reaches individuals in corporate America as well well as in the actual church pew, uh, men and women alike. He has phenomenal success on how to teach you how to do relationships and business and ministry and everything else in between. God has really blessed him with wisdom and knowledge. He's also a phenomenal and well-known and recognized uh, public speaker. So we're going to actually get into this conversation. Dr. Eddie, how are you this evening? Absolutely wonderful. Uh, so glad to be with you. How are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm doing well. I'm so glad to have you here tonight. I love that New York skyline in the background. I love your fly glasses. <laughs> you know, I feel like <laughs> the fly glasses on the in the background and on you. So that's amazing. And I'm so super excited to have you here tonight. You are a blessing not only to the body of Christ, but also to the world um, and, 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 and also across the United States. So we thank God for your phenomenal voice tonight. I want to talk about, I named this show the man, his mantra, and his ministry. Why? Because we're going to talk about the man himself, what drives him, what gives him the passion to do what he does. It has to be driven. Him authoring nine, uh, uh, 14 um, best-selling books, right? And being on the New York Times best-selling actual uh, list, there has to be passion behind that. People want to know what this man is talking about, what he's saying, what drives him, what motivates him. And it's pretty awesome. Thank you, Sharon Smith, for joining tonight. It, God bless you. Good to see you. And so we want to talk about that, the man, the personal individual. We also want to talk about his mantra. He's huge on relationships and ministry, also masculinity and femininity. He is huge on those things. We want to talk about that. And then we want to talk about ministry in itself. I got loaded questions. I know y'all are here for it. Hey, Miss Teresa uh, Gomez, thank you so much for joining tonight. We're going to get this party started. First loaded question, Dr. Eddie, before we get started, before we dive deep into it, first loaded question. So many people have pulled um, off the hurts and pains um, they have actually drawn on the hurts and pains of their past for their scholarly work, their scholarly endeavors, as, as well as um, authoring books. What has been so painful for you in your life, your experiences and exposure to pain that has led you to now author 14 best-selling books and also being on the New York Times best-selling list? What hit your heart and made you author these many books and also hit the hearts of people? Yeah, um, you uh, you you definitely jumping into the deep end immediately, and uh, <laughs> uh, you're you, the the first uh, prefix of your name is uh, shy, but uh, you're definitely not shy about uh, your conversation, your questions. So uh, let's jump on in tonight. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, as Langston Hughes said, uh, one of the greatest. Uh, writers of the, the Harlem Renaissance who said, uh, life of me ain't been no crystal stare. Yeah. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a living witness. Uh, your test of testimony, your misery is ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, your mess is a message. Your stumbling block is a stepping stone. What God will do is he'll use your setback as a setup for your greatest comeback. Yes. Uh, he, I'm a living witness. He'll use your tragedy as strategy. Uh, yes. We had the movie The Color Purple playing on, on the screen tonight. I tell you, just like Sophia, all my life. <laughs> I have to I fight. fight. <laughs> I think I, I think we talked to some people who are watching this tonight. They had to fight through the storm, the rain, sickness, and pain, and they That's don't right. look like what they've been through. Amen. Uh, they're they're uh, they they were able to understand that uh, challenges create champions, and and for me, uh, twenty twenty two marks twenty two years of being cancer free. Yes. And uh, to to not look like what I've been through to be uh, diagnosed with cancer as a tender teenager and, um, you know, being in 
in a place to where uh, my own biological father never visited me one day in the hospital. Uh, growing up in a divorced household and, and the question becomes, how do you play a role when you weren't given a script? How do you become a man if you don't see one, much less interact with one? Yeah. Uh, sometimes your trauma is what helps you to triumph. Dealing with uh, imposter syndrome and, and all types of uh, survivor's guilt because at the age of uh, seven, my, my best friend died of what I was dealing with. He died of cancer and, they, and years later, I'm, I'm now diagnosed uh, with cancer, uh, to see an aunt and a cousin both die, much less uh, mm -hmm. people who, of course, we know every second in America, two to three people diagnosed with cancer, one in every 1,000 teenagers. Sometimes mm -hmm. you go through things in your life to where uh, you say, I've been a pretty good person. I could think of about 10 other folks yeah. who should be where I am right now. Why me? Why now? And I uh, went through chemotherapy, radiation, diagnosed with uh, NHL, which I thought was National Hockey League. But the doctor said, no, it was non-Hoskins lymphoma. Right. Uh, he says, uh, you've been diagnosed with stage four cancer. Uh, out of school my sophomore year, and I pretty much love school. Uh, my favorite two classes in school were gym and lunch. Mm -hmm. I love to chase the girls in gym and then sit down and eat with them at lunch. And, and I'm in a precarious position, fighting for my life now when I'm starting my life. Years later. Uh, due to the, because of the grace of God and a praying mama uh, told me to go to Psalm 118, 17 says, you shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord to find I'm the can in cancer. That's right. Lost all my hair, lost my self-confidence and my self-esteem, uh, but I had to find the, the fight on the inside to have the fortitude in the midst of the fire uh, to come out as pure gold. And mm -hmm. um, to uh, go through that and, and even grow through it. And then to, to, to experience a situation where I'm in a convenience store years later, when I'm inconvenienced, a guy walks up to me who knew of my ordeal with cancer. And he said this to me, uh, I thought you died. <laughs> uh, did, didn't even say what up though. Didn't say hello. Didn't say what's good, bro. Uh, right. He said, I thought you died. I was getting ready to have a Will Smith, Chris Rock moment. I was getting ready to hit him and go oops upside his head, but I had to exercise emotional intelligence. That's right. Uh, if not for the grace of God, there go I. That's right. And That's so, right. Uh, I'm telling you, my fist balled up, and I'm so glad. Uh, I think it had to be an angel of the Lord who released my hand because I would have had an assault charge because uh -huh. I was so infuriated yeah. uh, that somebody would even say that to me. And if anything at all that I did die to, I died mm -hmm. to people's expectations. That's right. I died to the fact that people's opinions would not become my prison mm. uh, to, to move into a place to where uh, I live through dying places. And it's nothing but uh, God's grace where I am, uh, where I am today, much less I've been able to, to go, go through and, and, and come out uh, better than when I went in. So that's, that's my claim to fame. That's my that's my story. But God gets all the glory. Absolutely. Let me tell you something. I told one of my friends that I would not cry on this live tonight because Dr. Eddie Connor Jr. always makes me cry. <laughs> he makes me laugh. It makes me cry. But let me tell you something. That's one yeah. of the most phenomenal stories of victory and overcoming. So it makes sense to me that God has given you now double for your trouble. Come on. He's turned your test into a triumph. He's turned your victimization, potential victimization into victory. That's what God does. And you are the living testament of that. And I absolutely love that. I love one of the comments of my brother who is on the live tonight. I love him. Daryl Bryan, Apostle Daryl Bryan is on here. This is one of the comments that he made. He said, how you play a role? How do you play a role when you weren't given a script? One of the books that you have just written out, just released, um, just written and just released, is a phenomenal read about the, the mask of masculinity. Can you talk to us a little bit more about the pain around your father not being present and how God used that pain to now help you write this book and also teach men on how to take off the mask and now put on that which is character, that which is righteousness, that which is strength, that which is genuine for them. This book is a phenomenal book. If you guys haven't already um, done so, you need to go to Dr. Eddie's website and order that book. And listen, The Mask of Masculinity is going to teach you about men and their emotions and how to actually tap into their emotions, but also allowing them to be genuinely who they are. So if you haven't already done so, do that before we end this live. But also, if you 
come into the room. Thank you so much, Apostle uh, Claiborne, for being here. Click like, click share. We want to know that you are here. We want to stay connected with you all because we're going to continue to have phenomenal one-on-one -on -one in exclusive interviews as we continue out throughout this year. That was a phenomenal share. T tell us about how your actual pain, not having a father present, drove you to write that book because that's a phenomenal book. People, it's flying off the shelves and it's changing men and women's lives, giving us insight into men, but helping men heal. Yeah, yeah, this is this is the book here. Uh, mm -hmm. Shameless plug, The Mask of Masculinity. It went number one. It just came out uh, just last, just uh, a couple months ago, just June, uh, June 14th, mm -hmm. uh, during, you know, uh, Father's Day, uh, as well as Father, you know, uh, Men's Month. And yes. uh, it's on Amazon right now. You can get it. Went number one on Amazon. Great read. Yeah. Uh, in regards to, um, <laughs> it's an e-book, it's an audio book, it's a hard copy as well. Uh, but I, I had to go to a deeper level uh, in my writing to, to touch, get in touch with uh, uh, some places in my life yeah. that oftentimes we do mask. And mm -hmm. I, I really wanted to write about the frailties, the father wounds, the frustrations uh, mm -hmm. that are in uh, us as men. You know, uh, in every kid is a king and every king is a kid. That's right. And uh, I, I think um, one thing that we do a disservice to uh is when we're growing up you know we say boys don't cry crying mm -hmm. is for girls That's right. and, and it's not only that we're hearing that from men but we're hearing that from women yes to where in many cases it now we we become emotionally shackled yeah from the time we we're we're knee high to a duck we yeah. become emotionally shackled from the time we were boys and then now women expect us to be open emotionally and vulnerably in relationships, but we were taught to be shut down even as boys. Yeah. Uh, I, I think um, one of the uh, main things, especially as I was writing about the mask of masculinity is looking at the whole aspect is that uh, we, we didn't just start wearing masks when uh, COVID-19 hit. We yes. always worn a mask. Um, and I think if COVID-19 taught us anything is can you touch somebody without touching somebody? Can you be there without being there? Can yeah. you literally touch somebody's heart without using your hand? That's right. And in many cases, we, we've always worn this mask. It's, by, it's our muscles. It's our money. It's our Mercedes. It's right. a phone book full of ladies. It's all of those outer accoutrements yes. that in many cases keeps us locked up. And, and the masculinity is about more than 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 just your your money or your muscles you know what mm -hmm. is it to to have a rolex but you don't know what time it is what Ooh. is it for a man to have a foreign vehicle and he, he he's he's he knows how to drive it but he doesn't know what's driving him That's doesn't right. doesn't matter what kind of glasses you're wearing if you lack vision yes and uh we always talk so much about proverbs 31 who can find a virtuous woman a price is price is far above rubies but here's what we fail to talk about we fail to talk about Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6. Now, I'm more English than math, but yeah. 20 comes before 31, <laughs> right? Yes. Proverbs 20, verse 6, and many of us have probably never even heard the verse. <laughs> Who can find a faithful man? Yes. And I think we're living in a time right now where, where uh, we're living in a, a, a season of who can find. Yeah. We want yeah. sisters to be virtuous. But brothers, we got to be faithful. That's right. Right. And I think that's what we the, the, the cataclysmic expert extirpation of where it is that we are yeah. is in that specific place. As a man, am I faithful in my calling? And I yes. am I faithful in my character? Am I faithful in my commitment? Am I faithful in my relationship to Christ? If I can't do do any of that in those areas, relationships will always fail and falter. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. I love the fact that you've centered around not the outward appearance, because even the word of God says, Dr. Eddie, yeah. man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. This book is centered around the character of the man working from the inside out and making that definition clear. Can you talk to us a little bit more about how you define faithfulness in the actual um, in your book? And where have you seen in society men absent of that, the reason why they're falling, you know, um, beyond, below the bar as it pertains to relationship and relationship standards. 
Yeah, you know, I think we have, uh, in many cases, put people on pedestals that they don't even have the place to where they can possibly uh, reach that level. Yeah. Um, and we place people on pedestals because of titles. What is a title without a function? We place people on pedestals because of money. But where is what is money if you don't have a mentality? That's right. And I think um, us as men, it's hard to become what we what we can't see especially mm -hmm. when it hasn't been healthy. Yeah. If you've come from a place of, of a divorced home uh, where maybe your father wasn't, wasn't there, where when he was present physically, he was absent mentally, socially, emotionally, where you've seen chaos, where there's been uh, intergenerational trauma and, and emotional mm -hmm. incarceration, things mm -hmm. that we have not healed from. And, and as a result, because we don't heal, now we bleed on people who didn't cut us. Yeah, uh, because we're hemorrhaging, we're leading while bleeding. Yeah. Uh, I, I think all of that is the inner turmoil, is the inner trauma of what it is that we experience, and as a as a consequence, now we trauma bond. Yeah. We now connect with other individuals uh, who don't reflect the healing that we need. They mm -hmm. they reflect the hurt that we have experienced. That's good. And I think uh, uh, all of that now really uh, uh, amounts to the whole aspect of, of, of really where us as, as men are in a specific society. Um, being able to really, yes, take ownership, being able to take accountability, being able to uh, move into a place and a space of, of responsibility. And I think for us as men, there is no true respectability without responsibility. And that yes. faithfulness is, uh, can you be faithful as a father? What are you doing every single day to at least get 1% better? Absolutely. If you don't have an accountability partner right now, can you hold yourself accountable to your commitments? Can you be committed to your commitments each and every single day to get better? I think that is the challenge uh, that we have to embrace. We know how to embrace a challenge of playing yeah. on the court. We know how to embrace the challenge of throwing the football and doing something that's physically active and, and being in the gym but actually, can we actually uh, move into a place to where we we now uh, move into a greater commitment each and every single day of being better and being our brother's keeper and our sister's protector? Absolutely. I absolutely love it. Let me ask you this. I mean, because uh, the part about the masculinity and then putting on the mask, a mask says... I'm going to pretend or cover something that's actually there and present. Hey, my sister Leah, thank you so much for joining. Vanessa, uh, my brother Lynn, thank you all so much. My mom is here. She heard Dr. Eddie Connor oh, wow. Jr. is in the house. <laughs> <laughs> she, thank she's you, Mama, here. for joining. <laughs> Absolutely. Dorothy, Dorothy Hogan is my mama. So I'm so thankful to God that she's here tonight. When we talk about um, even removing the mask, when it comes to love for men, how have you been able to equip them and educate them from your relationship academy now shifting them to an elevated ego academy because it's a progressive thing? How have you been able to help them heal from their past traumas around love and relationship and connection in order for them to soar in life? Literally acknowledging the fact that they've hid some stuff, they got on a mask, they got to deal with it, but in dealing with it, the expectation is not to be perfect. How have you equipped them to tap into those emotions, not to be perfectionist or perfect, but being able to acknowledge things that are going on in their lives and no longer mask it and deal with it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think uh, if you're going to be an eagle, you got to let go of the ego. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's right. Too many things we... <laughs> That's too right. many things we will never soar to the next level unless we release what's weighing us down. Right. Um, and, and I think uh, it is that scripture laying aside every weight, the sin that does so easily beset you. That's um, good. Uh, being able to actually tap into, yeah, you use the, the, the scripture, the scriptures, you use the, you know, the religious aspect, uh, mm -hmm. faith, but also personal works. I think yes. being able to uh, connect theology and psychology together yes. uh, is, in many cases, what we have to endure and go through. Because most of the battles that we experience uh, are between our ears. Uh, yeah. Most people who are in the hospital, uh, it's not so much that they're sick, it's that they're, they're depressed. It's psychosomatic. So what's going on here affects what's taking place in the body. And as a result, uh, 
I think confidence is uh, taking a hit. It's, it leads to depression. So many things that we go through that we have not unraveled, that we have not unpacked, that we have not, uh, in many cases, taken the skeleton out of the closet to look at it, take off the mask, actually heal from the past yeah. uh, to be able to address that. I, I uh, did a session uh, in, in my academy once talking about tales of the toxic male. Yeah, uh, the, the, about the toxicity of what it is that we experience. I've I've talked in many cases about uh, how to to heal from what is what it what is burdening you. I'm doing a session on Wednesday uh, yeah. called "Take the Monkey Off Your Back." Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I uh, love how, how to break how to break burdens that keep you broken. It, it, you know, uh, what's on our back is is more than just uh, what people have experienced with monkeypox. That's right. That's I right. Think, uh, what we have. It, <laughs> Yeah, what well, we have experienced in many cases, it is weighing us down. Erica Badu talked about the bag lady. You're going to hurt your back carrying right. all those bags. That's right. The bags of brokenness, the bags of uh, of the mistreatment and how people have talked to you. They said sticks and stones will break your bones, but words are never hurt. That's a lie. That's my a lie. bones are healed faster than in many cases my my emotional wounds internally. That's that's so right. uh, really being able to talk about it, to address it, you can't heal from what you won't deal with. You can't address what you won't confess. You can't fight what you won't face. And yeah. Until we look at the man or the woman in the mirror, our vision will always be blurry. It'll never be clear. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. I love it. Dr. Con Eddie Connor Jr. is in the house tonight. He has started off. It's power packed, you all. If you all haven't already done so, click like and click share, invite at least five folks into the room. Anthony, Pastor Anthony, thank you so much for being here tonight. My brother, Michael Samuels, thank you, Miss Lorraine, for being here tonight, supporting this amazing live. Like I said, share it on your social media. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity to hear the Dr. Eddie Connor Jr., New York Times bestselling author, relationship expert. Literally, he teaches people how to evolve in relationships, also evolve in their business, their ministry, their careers. God has really blessed him to go through some amazing things. And as you already heard tonight, he talked about how his trauma has blessed him to help him to become triumphant, but also to help other people become triumphant in their lives as well. So if you haven't already done so, invite some folks into the room. We're having this amazing conversation. Also, if you do me a favor, if you have questions or comments that you want to share, put them in the actual comment section. We want to make sure that we're here to serve you tonight and answer those questions. Hey, my beautiful sister, Aubrey Williams, thank you so much for joining tonight. I love you, sis. You are so faithful. And this is the Good Good Talk with Shira Lowe. We're here with our special guest, amazing guest, phenomenal guest, illustrious guest, <laughs> Dr. Eddie Connor Jr. And it's a once in a lifetime opportunity here on that Good Good Talk to have this exclusive conversation. I want to ask you this. I hear a lot of men that grew up in single households, uh, single parent households similar to yours, raised by their mother. They talk about the verbal abuse that occurred by mm. default. Some of it was by default. Um, some of the things that were said was by default, not necessarily, you know, striking out at the kid more so than striking out at the memory of the loss of the father. Can you talk about how that has um, played a role in men masking their emotions and also how it has prevented them from entering into and remaining in healthy relationships. Mm, that that's uh, definitely deep there. Um, you know, I think if if you are coming from you know a household to where um, your the mother has put down the man who you look like, yeah, who you come yeah. from, yeah, who is your father. Uh, it it does have a deleterious effect on how you view yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, um, if you keep hearing that there are no good men, then why would I specifically want to become one? Yeah. You know, yeah. it. How do I even become one if all the possible ones that I see that could possibly be good are yeah. still told that they're bad? Yeah. Uh, I, I think it, it affects self-esteem. I think it affects your, your perception of yourself, mm -hmm. your view on the world. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it, uh, most of us do need, yeah, we got Jesus, but we also need therapy. Yes, we do. <laughs> Amen you to know, that. And, yes. 
you yeah. know, uh, uh, it, it is Sigmund Freud who said we are in adulthood what we have experienced in childhood. Uh, it is Dr. Joy DeGroy who talked about the uh, post-traumatic slave syndrome yes. uh, in her book. She talks about how we carry in our DNA uh, the, the, uh, the trauma of ancestors yes. from generations down the line. <laughs> There's no way that we can even tap into generational blessings until we address generational curses. Yes. The abuse, the verbal mistreatment, uh, mm. the, the abandonment, the isolation, yeah. um, and, and, and all of the things that have become murky in our lives yeah. to where now uh, there's no possible way that you could possibly even soar when somebody has clipped your wings and tried to break your wings all your life. You know, how, how can I rise like a Maya Angelou whenever I got so many things that are pushing me and pulling me down? Absolutely. And I think we have to get to this place in our lives to to where we begin to love ourselves in a greater way where we, we actually contend. We, we actually uh, work on handling ourselves yes. uh, in, in a safe space, in a safe way uh, that is not reminiscent of how people mishandled us. That's good. Uh, if you think about Mephibosheth in, in scripture, uh, mm -hmm. the person who was supposed to care for him was a nurse and she dropped him. He dropped somebody him. who was <laughs> somebody who was so. Yeah, she dropped him. Yeah. Somebody who cares for people for a living. Yeah. 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 Dropped somebody. And yeah. now he was lame for the rest of his life. And in, in, in many cases, uh, it, it's so hard for us to leap because we're still dealing with everything that keeps us lame and keeps us limping through life. But you got to understand, listen, if people talking behind your back, that means you're already ahead of them. Come on. Trying to pull you down, that means they're already below you. You can't pull me down if you're above me. Come on. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I've got to pull myself up. I've got to find the, the greatness that's on the inside of me. I've got to understand that I can live through dying places. I got to get to a place that moves from a place of just survivor mentality right. into now thriving. I've got to, yes, therapy is going to help it. Uh, forgiving people who hurt you and mistreated you. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and then appropriating the, the love of God and the forgiveness of God in your own life as well. Absolutely. I love how you methodically and systematically said these are the steps and you're freeing people up tonight to say it's OK to have Jesus and therapy. Um, my, 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 my wonderful friend, Dr. Chanel Dixon, she came up actually with that actual saying Jesus and therapy. Try Jesus and therapy. And I think a lot of times and mm. I can tell, and I'm being honest and transparent for me, I'm actually I always tell people all the time when I hit a place where I am triggered in an area. I go to therapy. I will jump into therapy real quick. That's not that I'm a basket case or anything like that. It's just that I want to be able to unpack the things that I don't know that's there. There is an invisible spirit at work when you're talking about trauma. I'm reading this book um, called um, Running on Empty. Um, um, running running mm. on Empty talks about the invisible emotional neglect it doesn't talk about wow. what was actually present in terms of what we did receive. It talks about what we didn't receive. And a lot of times we don't even mm. know that we're battling against this, 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 um, this uh, foreign thing that is, can't be seen. It's not tangible. We can't touch it, but we know we feel it. We know we think it. We know that there is absent of something. We're absent of something. And this book talks about what not only what we received and how we received it, but also what we didn't receive. A lot of times people don't understand. You had a conversation with your mother and your father, and they may have given you hug, but they were it hugs, but they were absentee parents because they had to work, you know, between 10 and 12 hours a day. So now the quality time wasn't there, even though maybe there was an emotional connection or even vice versa. And a lot of times people don't know unless they sit before a therapist. And I always recommend an anointed therapist. Come on, a cry, a Holy Spirit filled right. therapist. Yeah. So they can know, listen, sure. they can saw stuff out and see stuff that we don't see. 
And it's so important for us to be able to do that. So I love that conversation. I love the transparency as well. I know one of another book I'm going to talk about now, your mantra. One of your mantras is not only relationships, but specifically being able to empower and talk to women, being able to bless them and honor them and acknowledge the queen in them. You recently came out with a best-selling um, book called Dear Queen, Volume 2. It's the second volume. That thing literally flew off the shelves. It was so amazing. I want you to talk about how is your personal experience, not only with your mom being raised in a, a single parent home with your mom and seeing her overcome but also your relationships maybe with your aunts and those who are extended role models in the community. It drove you to write this book that pays such homage to women and, and empowering them. And so how has your wonderful experiences really created an environment for you to write something like Dear Queen, uh, Dear Queen 1, Volume 1 and Volume 2? Yeah, um, might as well show it. It's show and tell. Dear Queen, Volume 2 right here. Uh, That's right. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, if you don't have it, make sure that you get it. That's um, right. It's a great read for not only the the women but also the brothers too. How to wear your crown, walk in authority and authenticity. Um, and and even let me just rewind back to the, the the mask of masculinity. One of the beautiful things about that book, yes, is written to men, but it's also about how women can create a safe space and place for men to be vulnerable with them. That's right. Gain and love understanding a man's mind. That's yeah, right. And absolutely. Absolutely way in a genuine way. I love that. Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. No, 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 no. I, I wrote Dear Queen, um, which I define queen as quintessentially unique, empowering everyone naturally. I, I believe real queens don't compete. They collaborate. Yes. Uh, they, uh, they're not just focused on a man. They focus on their purpose and plan. They understand that their royalty demands loyalty as a result. Uh, they understand they're too unique to compete. They're too rare to compare. They That's wear right. their crown, they build their queendom and the kingdom of God. And so, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there you go. You wear your crown. You wear your <laughs> crown. You walk in authority and authenticity as well. Thank um, you. Seeing my mother, yeah, yeah. Seeing my mother um, being a, you know, 30-year educator, um, being a general, raising myself and my brother. I mean, she had yes. us in church. Uh, uh, we went to service, more services than there were days in the week. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> a powerful praying woman for sure, and I think she really, uh, uh, she she has, you know, affected positively the prism of how I see women in society today. Yeah, uh, yeah. because she was the one uh, who really, she made me live despite going through cancer yeah. when I wanted to give up. I was yeah. ready to throw in the towels, ready to give it up. I was ready to go on. And uh, she said, you're not leaving me. You know, you need to take off that pity party hat. Yes. And uh, you're going you gonna to live through this. She was playing mm -hmm. healing tape. She was laying hands on me. She was um, getting off her lunch break while teaching special ed and coming to uh, make sure that I'm all right. And it just, I mean, she just really birth within me that determination to say you're gonna bounce back from a setback she told me this she said you know everybody gets knocked down in life but a knockdown is not a knockout unless you stay down yeah. you gotta get back up again you know That's i'm right. reminded what muhammad ali said the canvas is no place for a champion right and so that determination that she instilled in me yeah um you know gave me just that that whole ass uh that just that whole mindset to to, to not quit just to keep on going. And so uh, seeing her as a, just a preeminent queen. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's, I mean, what more can I say? You know, uh, in, in the words of, uh, in the words of Tupac, he said, uh, there's, there's no way I can pay you back, but my plan is to show you that I understand. <laughs> you are appreciated. <laughs> that's right. So, <laughs> Don't let me, let, oh, let's not sure. quote Biggie and Tupac, because you know we'll do that. We do that well, Dr. Eddie, we do that well. <laughs> you already know it. I'm a hip hop head, for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I am too, and I love it. I love it, yeah. I love it. 
I love how you pay honor to her. I want to um, say this. I, I, I want to encourage and thank you all so much for joining the key. Kenya, thank you so much for joining. Like I said, Pastor Anthony, wonderful. Sharon, thank you so much for being here tonight. You guys are super, super awesome. Thank you for your support. If you haven't already done so, click like, click share. This is a phenomenal conversation. Dr. Eddie's being transparent, but he's also being empowering. He has lived out that which he has written about in his books. That's why he is a New York Times bestselling author. He is speaking from the heart. You cannot practice or preach. I mean, I'm sorry, you cannot share literally to, with individuals something that you don't even practice. You can't, you can't preach it if you don't practice it. It comes off as empty words. And as you can tell, he's not only a cancer survivor, he's been through a single mother household. Um, he and his brother, he has actually gone through some challenges, as you can imagine, but his mom kept him on the altar. I want to talk about this. Um, Dr. Eddie, you said something that was really powerful. You talked about all of the things that your mom had in her as an evangelist, as a prayer warrior, as a pastor now, she's a phenomenal, I mean, nationally and internationally known pastor. That's where you and your brother get all your flyness from. I mean, you know, it's, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, she's a fashionista. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, she, she's absolutely gorgeous. And all of like the cousins, pebbles and all that stuff, all of them, everybody just gorgeous. The whole family just beautiful, including you and your brother, Elijah, just phenomenal and a phenomenal talent. Yeah. I want to have this very, very transparent conversation where we're talking about mantra. Once again, you talk about relationships. You said that your mom came as a power pack queen. She was equipped with a lot of stuff. So she had what you needed in order for you to become great in life. But I want to talk about when we're talking about relationships, pivot a little bit for me here. When we're talking about male and me, uh, female relationships, I'm not talking about um, platonic. I'm talking about committed, intimate relationships and also romantic relationships, marriage relationships. Sometimes we can come equipped with what a person needs to get them to success. But sometimes lack, there's a lack in terms of what we want or need in terms of being able to have healthy relationships. Can you talk about some of the things that people lack in healthy relationships and they don't show up with the whole combination of, of want and need and it's causing in society some very, very devastating results in relationship. Can you talk about that? Yeah, um, I think um, one of the precarious places of relationships is uh, people never remember takers, but they always remember givers. Mm -hmm. And when you only come to the table of relationships to take, but you have nothing to give, you only come to the table of relationships with an appetite, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but you have nothing to contribute. Yeah. It uh, creates for a painful situation. Um, yeah. I, I think people mm -hmm. have not treated relationships uh, in, in this scenario, yeah. you, you can't be the customer all the time. You got to eventually be the waiter or the waitress. That's right. You, you can't, you can't just solely come just to receive, but have nothing to give. And I think another thing as well is this, is that, um, we have to realize that love is not enough. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I think, um, Love is a thread, but purpose is the glue. Purpose mm -hmm. is the gorilla glue, so to speak. Yes. Um, because to a certain degree, your heart will take you where your mind can't keep you. Yeah, yeah. So many times we're looking at just the out outward appearance. Man, look at the outward appearance, but 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 God is the one who looks at the heart. And uh, coming from that place as well is um, when you you can never expect a, a purpose partner if you have not first partnered with your purpose. What have yeah. you done right now in the place of your singleness to move as close as you possibly can to wholeness? Yeah. If you only see singleness as a curse, yeah, you'll be choosing any and everybody because exactly. you can't even stand to be alone by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And then if and when you do get healed in the relationship, you'll say, what in the world did I just get myself into? Yes, sir. <laughs> and I think we also need to understand what are our specific needs. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, Dr. Gary Chapman talks about the five love languages. 
Yeah. We don't really get to even ask how people need to be loved. We don't ask the tough questions. How were you raised? Did yeah. you see love in your home? Uh, yeah. What is the relationship like with you and your parents? We yeah. just looking for what's your what's your favorite color? Who's your favorite singer? What's your favorite entertainer? Where you like to go eat? Where you like to hang out? We only deal with surface stuff. It's true. We they never like get they into the deep end. We only deal with do you like sushi or soul food or do you like both? Hey, what's yeah. your favorite Tupac and Biggie song? <laughs> 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 is it keep your head up your or top your, five? Um, yeah, right, right. What's your where's your top? Five? Can you send me your Spotify <laughs> the list? Can you right. send me your Amazon list? It's absolutely true. I love that. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Doctor. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's true. It's true. And everybody doesn't want love. Some people want help. Absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, and, and they, they, want they will. They will. You say that again. And they solely want a cheerleader versus like you yeah. said or some they want to be served versus putting on the apron like you said like jesus said and they come to serve i'm sorry go ahead the, absolutely you're right about that yeah. um i think as as well when i was talking about you know those, those five love languages mm -hmm. um i don't really think a lot of people necessarily know how they need to be loved and, and here's what we do as a consequence we love mm -hmm. people the way we think they need to be loved Yes. versus loving them how they need to be loved. Yeah. If we don't get to the root of where people are, the, the depth of uh, connectivity with individuals, we'll never be able to love them the way that they possibly need to be loved. That's true. Is it acts of service? Is it, is it time? Is it affirmation? Yeah. What, what, what is the love language that people speak Absolutely. And uh, I think when we really begin to get to that place, you know, we can really have some some real uh, commonality, ask the tough questions, but also uh, get some serious answers because it's beyond just attractability. Yes. It's got to be about suitability. Absolutely. And I agree with you 100 percent, Dr. Eddie, what I've learned actually in the dating space and just interacting not only in dating, but platonic relationships. I am learning that even operating and navigating through um, the love languages, you have to come with not only a healed heart, but a sacrificial heart. So now that means that even when I don't feel like loving you in your love language, I'm going to do it because sacrificial love speaks to service. It's service centered, mm -hmm. not flesh centered. It's service centered, not flesh and agenda and intellect driven, but it's heart and service and ministry different driven real love actually is a ministry it really is it suffers long and it's kind what does that say in second was second corinthians or first corinthians the 13th chapter love suffered long and is kind it keeps no record of fault it literally it hopes all things believes all things trusts all things literally that's a ministry within itself and so when we are now functioning in the love languages i love how you said it it's literally us tapping into what our spouse partner or mate or platonic friends love languages, but being willing to sacrificially flow into it. Hey, my brother, Mark, thank you so much for sharing both Mark Click, um, Click and also Mark Gonzalez. Thank you all for being here tonight. I love you guys. Click like and click share. This is a phenomenal conversation. But I think that people are absent of the ability. They're willing to love within those love languages, but they're not willing to do it to a sacrificial point. Sacrifice, mm. like Jesus did on the cross, it hurts. It takes a willingness. It takes a commitment that goes beyond the flesh. And it goes definitely beyond the intellect and what you feel. It goes into, you have to tap, tap into something deeper. That's why I tell people in order to really truly love, you have to have some level of relationship, not only with God, but literally tap into a belief and a faith system that says, I won't quit. I'm not going to throw in the towel. It's sacrificial. And a lot of times I believe that people have been so devastated and so hurt and, 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 and miss educated and mis, um, misinformed. Come on, come on in here, um, Lauren Hill. Yeah, Miseducation yeah. of Lauren Hill. They have been- <laughs> <laughs> Come on, come on. We, we, he keeps on drawing me back in. I mean, just, you know, <laughs> and people literally are so broken that they have not been able to navigate through the space of sacrificial love. 
I want to talk about this. I want to ask you a real candid question. I have a lot of friends that are pastors and leaders and ministers. You know, I'm an ordained minister myself. So I navigate through the actual, in addition to my corporate role and position as a corporate executive, I'm in healthcare. I also navigate through the ministry space. I see a lot more devastating relationship results in the ministry space, believe it or not, than other spaces. How, why is it so difficult, not just for just the lay Christian to be in healthy, enter into and remain in healthy relationship, but honestly, Dr. Eddie, why is it so hard for pastors and leaders and ministers who are well versed in the word of God, so difficult for them to get it right? It's not just the status and the money, because I know that we hear about that saying, you know, um, it, it's different for them because you know, they have to figure out people's motives and agendas. But once they figure out people's motives and agendas are good, they're still having difficulties remaining in relationships and in a healthy way. Um, we don't see a lot of healthy um, relationships that we can look at. There's a few that we can look at and say, oh, I really want that. You know, um, Sarah Jakes Roberts and, and, and Ture Roberts, great example. I really want that. They, they, they literally live out endurance and perseverance and sacrifice and, and, and all of that. But why do you think it's so difficult outside of the whole prestige and status and, 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 and seeing people's motives? Why is it so difficult pastors, leaders and ministers, less known a lay person, to stay in a healthy relationship and stay committed and remain committed? Uh, very, very good question. Uh, a, a title is not a panacea for trauma. Mm. And uh, <laughs> so good. Yeah. So good. Yeah, it is not a panacea for all ills. Um, mm -hmm. Oftentimes, because you are thrust onto a, uh, a stage and a scene and yes. you're, you're over a certain in, in, amount of individuals, you're an overseer, you have a big platform. Yeah. Uh, now the spotlight is on you. Sure. Um, Night, light not only brings, uh, um, the light doesn't only bring, you know, uh, opportunity, it also puts heat on you. Yeah. And the light also exposes. Yeah. And, and in many cases, it, it, it is the fact that we have placed people uh, on pedestals. We've made individuals so iconoclastic. Yeah. Uh, that in many cases, doing the work of ministry but in many cases, they they're not doing the work internally. Yes, you, you can yeah. you can you can empower so many other individuals. You can counsel, you can teach, you can preach, you can yeah. marry individuals, and your home now be hit and hurt. That's right. You could you can be uh, prophesying and laying on hands, and uh, your family is torn, yes. and just uh, tore up from the flow up. That's right. Right, because in many cases. Uh, our first ministry, I believe, it has to be to the home. Yeah. Uh, if, if when you think about uh, the 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 climax of uh, the pandemic, mm -hmm. everybody was preaching a message about getting your house in order. Yeah. <laughs> right. While while we're now confined to our home. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> right. But in many cases, it was the external house. Yes. That we were putting more effort into than the internal house. That's right. That's right. Um, being able to to sweep around our own front door before we're trying to sweep around somebody else's. That's uh, right. I, I think um, uh, we, we know how to operate so s profoundly in, in our calling and the, uh, uh, the profundity of performance. Yeah. But after all of that, after the doors of the church are open and then the doors are the doors of church are closed because you're going That's home. Right. That's now right. you have to deal with reality. Absolutely. And um, it, it, and I think as, as well, if, if we don't do the healing internally that goes beyond just just the other uh, preaching, the prophesying and the praying. Yeah. Um, and, and actually now taps into the, the inner aspect of, yes, I'm at the top of this, but I feel low about this. That's right. I'm Isn't at it the interesting? Uh, you, you you could you, you could be preaching prophesying, but you still feel depressed. That's right. That's right. You're at the Something pinnacle. Is, you you got to do the thing. Yeah, it's true. You're at the pinnacle or the panacea, 
of your career, but you're in the pit concerning your um, personal relationships. You can be at the pinnacle or panacea of your literal career ministry, but you are literally in the pit concerning your relationships. I love Alexandra. That is so good, Dr. Eddie. I love Alexandra. She's actually a therapist by trade. Um, Shout out to my beautiful sister, Alexandra. I love you so much. She said, just because you know the right thing doesn't mean that everybody knows how to apply it or will do the right thing. In that powerful, I can know to do. Come on, Paul said it best. The good that I will to do, I don't. Come on. Come on, the good that I will to do, I don't. I want to ask this really quick question. Just a sidebar. Is it true that men really desire a cross pollination of Kelly Rowland and CC Winans? <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or your cousin, or your cousin Pebbles and CC Winans? Do they, they, do they want a cross pollination when they're dating? They want somebody that looks absolutely mega good, or is it a Cardi B? Or is it a Megan the Stallion and a CC Winans? She can, you know, twerk and also literally and also pray the house down and she's a second cousin to Jesus. Is that what they really want? Talk to us about that. <laughs> Maybe it's a combination of uh Megan the Stallion and Mahalia Jackson or, Ma- okay. or Madam <laughs> CJ Walker. I don't know. <laughs> um uh that, that's an interesting combo that you put together. Um, I I think as men, 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 we, we do want more than just sex silence in a sandwich and an ego stroke. Uh, some brothers are listening like, say it again. You want more than sex, silence and an ego stroke. Say that again because that's real. Yeah. I think internally within every man is more than just the desire for sex, silent sandwich, a sandwich yeah. and an ego stroke that's uh, right. for some brothers who have not, not, not matured yet. <laughs> they like, that's good enough for me. But, uh, I, I think internally yeah. with, within us as men, uh, is they, uh, the desire, uh, uh there's a, uh, author, his, his name escapes me. Uh, but I think his his book is called Wild at Heart, uh, yeah. talking about men. He said every man uh, has a quest for adventure. Every man has a quest for a challenge. And every man has a desire to love. Mm-hmm. Whether he has uh, identified that or not, internally within him is that raging uh, relief that he wants and needs. Yeah. And men suffer with anxiety. Men get depressed. Men get, experience all of these other emotions that, in many cases, we have been told that we do not tapped in, have not tapped into, because society socializes us as men to ignore all of that, right? All right. of the internal stimuli, and just focus on the external. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but I think you know, uh, no man is monolithic. You know, yeah. you know, is is not is not one size fits all for a man. Yes. Uh, I, I think in many cases, uh, a, a man pretty much really he wants to be uh, celebrated as a champion that he is and that he can be. Yeah. Uh, no man wants to. A man, I believe, is like a boxer. He doesn't want to have to fight in the ring and in the corner, too. That's true. The ring is the world. I know I'm going to get hit out there. I know somebody's probably going to call me a bad name because of the because they see my skin is a sin. I know all of these things are going to take place. I know I'm going to get hit in the world, right. but I don't expect you to hold a whip when I come back home. I don't expect yeah. you to hit me when I'm on the phone, yeah. right? I expect you to treat me like Bundini would treat Muhammad Ali yeah. as a cut man in the corner, mm. right? Tell me I'm a champ. Bandage that's, me up. That's right. right. And essentially, are you a wife or a knife? Yeah. Are you a cutter or are you a consoler? But also for men, are you a husband or a hammer? Yeah. So I think it really gets to the place of, uh, of uh, you know, if you want to be celebrated as, as the champion that you are, uh, it, it's, it's important for you to have the right type of voice who can speak to the king and the kid that's inside of you, too. Absolutely. I've actually heard, you know, and I love that you say that because I've actually had some therapists talk about um, how negative it is for us to still be a kid at heart. Even Jesus said, you know, to suffer not the children, you know, from coming unto him. There's always going to be a a child Mm -hmm. element, not a childish, 
there's a difference between having a child or a childish mentality or, or element to us. I think it talks about the hum the most humble, most vulnerable um, part of us. How is it? How is how important is it for yes, men and women to get healed, but maintain that childlike nature in order for them to be able to have fun, have a healthy balance in relationship, and also still flow dynamically in purpose together. Mm, that's good. Uh, I think the healing opens up the vault door yeah. that in many cases has been been totally shut. It, yeah. it, it, it opens you back up to become that child-like type of individual who had the childlike wonder because yes. here's what it does. It now opens up the door for trust again. Yeah. And, yeah. and trust is one of those things that we see children have all the time. We have to tell children, don't yeah. talk to strangers. That's true. Right? Because you're so trusting, but you yeah. don't want to be so trusting that you're deceptive, that you're, that you're deceived. That's true. right. Uh, the, the, <laughs> Uh, you you got to guard your heart, as scripture said. Guarding yeah. your heart is not building a wall. Guarding your heart is about building a bridge. Yeah. Certain yeah. people don't get access over this bridge. And then here it is, you got to check your bridge because maybe in many cases your bridge is under construction. Yeah. I, I don't need anybody walking across the bridge of my life right now. <laughs> I, I need to take some time to move with a place of isolation for revelation and elevation. That's and, right. and construction. Yeah. You know, uh, pardon my dust. I'm under construction. <laughs> where is the, the bridge of your life at right now uh, to, to where it is? Can it can it even hold a passenger? Absolutely. You know, so I, I think it uh, uh, healing becomes that 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 main ingredient um, to where you, you look at the TNT of your life, the trauma mm -hmm. and the triggers. Uh, of what it is that you have experienced and you see what in many cases is so explosive yeah. because you can be in a relationship with somebody, you can get into a, a, a heated debate with somebody and now you're triggered and now yeah. you do something permanent in a temporary situation. I love it. And words don't have receipts. They don't. They don't. Yeah. Absolutely. And I even posted online. I love this. This is so powerful. I posted online in terms of the, I said, Listen, you all have to make sure before you post, before you mm -hmm. put that finger to that post, you make sure that you <laughs> have the crazy and the emotions in check. That means get your inner cuckoo <laughs> and your emotions yeah. in check because you once it's out there, you can't take it back. And let me tell you something. I love the statement that you made earlier. Six and stones may break our bones, but words don't never hurt. Yes, they do because life and death is in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. And and literally, those who love it will eat its fruit. That means that once you put it, it, you're producing something with your mouth, like the word of God said, it literally you will it will yield the fruit back. And some of that stuff is irreversible. You cannot take it back. I believe there's a lot of men and women, female and male relationships. I'm talking about marriage relationships, intimate relationships have been so damaged because twofold words that were not retractable. And also the inability to heal and to forgive. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me um, how essential it is to forgive in relationships? I talked about sacrificial um, love earlier. Sacrificial, Jesus went to the cross for us, Dr. Eddie. One of his, listen, the main reason he came to earth was literally forgiveness, to give us forgiveness so that there would be reconciliation between us and the father. Because there was a chasm. Like you said, there was a bridge yeah. and that bridge was under mm -hmm. construction. Can you talk to us about the importance or essential, you know, component of forgiveness and what that looks like? Does forgiveness mean that I just, you know, let you just abuse me or can we just make mistakes and then we have to throw it away like it never happened? What does forgiveness look like in healthy relationships? How do you teach that in your ego academy so people can now show up in all types of relationships? Healthy, whole, but with the ability to operate in a realistic way. Because forgiveness is really a real thing in relationships, and you'll have to do it. Jesus even said seven times seventy-seven a day. So yeah. why are we not seeing that? And and what does that look like? That's that's good. You know, Mark Twain said, "Forgiveness is the fragrance that the violet sheds on the heel that has crushed it." 
if you think about it, uh, <laughs> there's a powerful uh, aphorism there. Uh, the violet that that is. <laughs> we're we're trying it. to stretch the elasticity of your thought tonight. <laughs> if we just, we're trying to do. If you, if you ain't trying to go deep, just go to Amazon Prime and Netflix. Uh, but um, uh, when you think about it, a fragrance comes out of you stepping on me, and fragrance comes out of you hurting me. That that only happens if I'm able to appropriate the forgiveness of God, because here it is, I can forgive because I understand that I don't always live as a victim. Yeah. Sometimes I'm a perpetrator. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest. We, we, we have such a victim mentality as if you ain't never done nothing. But when you think about how much you've been a perpetrator in your own life to other Come people. On. Come on. Come you, on. You can, you can say, all right, I, I can take this blow. I can take this L because I turned this L into love. I turned this L into a lesson. I turned this L into leadership. I turned this L into the fact that I'm leaning on the Lord and I got to have the Lord if I'm going to forgive right. even what I can't forget. That's right. That's right. That's Cer right. Certain things you never get over, you just have to manage. You, you mean to tell me it takes, it, it's only God to, mm -hmm. uh, for a mother to forgive an assailant who killed her son. It's only God for you to forgive somebody who abused you and misused you and, 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 and molested you and mistreated you. It's only God's grace yes. that even though you still have a memory of it, even though you still uh, have, have the scar, you're not picking at the wound. That's right. Right, you'll, you'll never heal if you keep picking at the wound. Yeah. And what forgiveness does, forgiveness heals the wound. Yeah. Doesn't mean I don't I don't see the scar. It yeah. Just means I don't have the pain anymore of it, yeah. because I've released it. And and in many cases, forgiveness is also uh, the fact that it's not just for them; it's for you. I gotta let me off the hook. That's they right. sleeping good at night. Yes. They they live in their life. They went ahead and got married. Right. I need to let myself off the hook by forgiving and letting it go, so that I'm not emotionally combustible yeah and i now find freedom where the spirit of the lord is there's liberty and that's mm -hmm. through forgiveness i love it dr eddie this is so powerful if you all haven't done already done so um those of you all are in the comment section invite someone click like and click share this is a phenomenal conversation shout out to my beautiful sister danielle wright that has joined the live tonight come on i got family deep in here don't play dr eddie we got them deep in here <laughs> <laughs> my, mom, my brother gonna join soon <laughs> so i love it um, so it's a family affair it's a family affair that's what's up and um thank you so much miss mamie for joining mamie gilbert is in here tonight um leah Simmons. Shout, shout out to mamie one of our eagle academy uh members yeah. absolutely she is phenomenal my brother reuben is in here tonight i love you way family thank you so much for joining and sharing if you haven't already done so click like click share and these few last few moments we're going to talk about continue to talk about relationship um and i want you guys to get these last few nuggets if you haven't already done so like i said click like click share invite about five people into the comment section that's all you have to do is put their names in the actual chat and invite them into the room as you can see this has been a phenomenal discussion exclusive interview with the one and only Dr. Eddie Connor Jr. He is a best-selling author, New York Times best-selling author. He has 14 books that he's authored. He's overcome, successfully overcome cancer. He's a professor, um, teaches in the uh, collegiate atmosphere. He has a phenomenal book that he just released called The, um, the Mask of Masculinity that he is teaching men on how to tap into their masculinity by taking off the mask and dealing with their vulnerable places and being able to be a vulnerable space for women and others in their lives. It's a phenomenal read. And then he also has the Dear Queen volume two. If you want to learn how to really tap into your inner strength as a woman and also men being able to see what makes a woman tick, you need to get that Dear Queen volume one and two. All these books you can get on Amazon. They're bestsellers on Amazon as well. You can actually order them or go to Dr. Eddie's uh, website or follow him on Instagram as well as Facebook. And you'll be able to see all of the access points for these 
these books. These books have changed individual lives. And I'm telling you, it's so amazing. Yes, shout out to our amazing cousins. I got cousins on here from Florida, Tommy and Evelyn. Wow. I'm telling you, they knew, I, let me tell you something. I told them, I said, Dr. Eddie is one of like my most favorite people that God has connected me with. He's my friend, he's the homie. And I said, he is amazing, but God has blessed him with such wisdom and knowledge to heal the inner man, to heal the inner woman, and to be able to cultivate the soul so that we can be the very best people that are individuals that God has called us to be. So I love it. Like I said, if you haven't already done so, click like and click share. I want to ask a quick question to Dr. Eddie. What does love look like for men? How women are on here mm. tonight, I hear all the time that we need to love our men and love for men is different than women. What does love look like for men? Because I know that we do, and like you said, men are not monolithic. Um, they're not all the same. But hey, LaCynthia, thank you so much. I love you so much. Thank you for being on here. Um, I want to know what does love look like for men? Because I could be setting myself up for failure as a woman, trying to love a man, trying to serve him, trying to give to him, trying to speak to him. And I always miss the mark. Or maybe being a cheerleader to him. And he's saying, nah, I just need respect. And what does that look like for men? What does love look like for men? Um, regrettably, I don't think we know. <laughs> I, I think it is, uh, seriously, I, I think it is, um, um, I, I, here's, what, here's one thing I think. Men internalize love as respect. Mm -hmm. Women internalize love as affirmation, affection. But us as men, we internalize love and respect. I think that's just one of the ingredients. But I think also it is a balancing act of learning how to tightrope tenderness and toughness. Yeah, We yeah. know how to be tough, but we don't necessarily know how to be tender. And here's the thing. We yeah. can never be tender with you if we're not first tender with ourselves. If we only see tenderness as feminine yes, and not necessarily masculine, if we only see emotions as something that is for the feminine, for, the fem for, for women, for the female species, yeah. and not for us as men, then we'll never move into a place of, of maturity. And I think that love for us as men, it begins with healing. And that, that healing is the father wounds, it's yeah. the mother wounds, is dealing with the frailties, is dealing with the frustrations, is yeah. dealing with the fissures in our lives. It is dealing with the whole aspect of emotional incarceration, it's intergenerational yeah. trauma, it's opening up the vault door that has been shut. Because us as men, we don't verbalize, we internalize. Yeah. And one of the things for us as men is so easy for us to get locked in yeah. to the past, locked into. I got to move into this mach machismo, uh, bravado aspect, which is nothing but pride and ego. Yeah. To where we don't know how to get out yeah. when we be become so locked in. And so I think we have to do the work internally. We, we have to uh, uh, work on our mental health. We have to work on our self-esteem and our, our self-confidence mm -hmm. and who it is that we are uh, beyond just hiding behind a, uh, a good paying job, a Fortune 500 CEO, or being in the boardroom, or 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 uh, you know driving a fancy car and having this amount of money, or wearing this nice suit. Actually, peering off the whole veneer, stripping yeah. yourself away from all of the things that are external, yeah. tapping into the internal you. Now you learn how to love you, and then you also learn what you need in the prism of love. Yes, absolutely. I absolutely and love it. And that's being able to be vulnerable, yeah. That's right, I love it, Dr. Eddie. Let me tell you something, one of my wonderful sisters and friends, Anisha Sharp, the minister, mm -hmm. Anisha Sharp. Come on now, she's up in the room tonight. She said she loved it, ooh, that's good. The combination or the beautiful symphony and balance of tenderness and toughness. Because I do think, like you said, when you started off the broadcast earlier, you talked about how it's difficult for men in society. They teach them, you know, you can fall, you can literally break off your leg. And they're like, don't you cry. Don't you cry. Don't, don't cry. You know, 
Absolutely. And then, you know, there's a there's a wonderful symphony and balance of it. One of the things I heard Bishop Jake say, T.D. Jake, Jake say to his wife, he said, respect looks like this. In addition to what you said in terms of the tenderness and toughness, allow me to be a safe mm. space, of, you know, and allow me to be able to express vulnerably who I am. He said this to his wife. He said one of the things he told her, he said, don't you ever. He said re respect showed up like this. That she was to never literally ever <laughs> correct him in public. He said that would be like mm. a cardinal sin. He said, if I get it wrong, you you better pretend like it was right. <laughs> you better pretend like it was right. And you better hold my hand while you doing it. And I know you talked about ego, but also as an extension of that, that's not just ego. What that is, is called covering and protecting. And I think in the relationship space, mm -hmm. we put so much emphasis on men covering women that we never talk about women covering men. There are some internal things that can happen in our relationships. You know, I, and I'm just being honest. There's times that you are going to have the knockdown drag out. I'm not talking about physical violence. I'm talking about it's going to get, you know, sometimes pretty heated. We in the body of Christ call it passionate fellowship. <laughs> <It's gonna be laughs> passionate fellowship. You know, however we want to you know, kind of make it, out, you know, nice. But there's going to be times you have some heated debates, heated conversations within that home. And what Bishop Jakes was saying that when we're, it's not putting on a facade, what it is, is it's covering his emotions, covering his mind, mm -hmm. covering his heart, covering the frailty of the man. I felt that I could start crying right there for real. I'm not going to cry. I made a promise, Dr. Eddie, to my friends. <laughs> <laughs> you get they that so in tears will reap in joy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Eddie. I needed to hear that. <laughs> I did. I'm telling you. But what he was saying is, is that it's about covering the fragility and the vulnerability of a man. And I think that we have lost the essence of that, especially with social media. We're going viral. People have disagreements and debates and they go viral and it just it becomes really crazy and ugly. And so I wanted to talk about that really quick, about the importance of men feeling like their vulnerability and their fragility, not just vulnerability. There is a fat, fragile boy in there, no matter how much you lift weight, no matter how much money you make, no, how, no matter how tall your stature is, there's still a vulnerable, fragile boy that's in there. The word of God says we have this treasure in earthen vessels a fragile vessel. That means it can be broken. It can be marred at any time through life circumstances. How do we now as women cover men when in a society where we've heard men always say, or society say, men have to cover women? What's the best ways we cover men in addition to what Bishop Jake said, how he likes his wife to cover him and respect him? Uh, boy. Uh, I think we have to come from a place of um, what something that I, I use. I don't have a law degree, so I don't judge. Right. And, um, you know, oftentimes we, we move so much into judgment that uh, we don't walk in love. You know, so many times when a man begins to take off his cape, and in many cases, uh, we, we love to be Superman, but in many cases, we're more like Clark Kent than we are Superman. We're more like uh, uh, David Banner than the Hulk. We're more like T'Challa than we are Black Panther. Yeah. Uh, there's more to us than our anger and our rage. And I think uh, when a man actually now unveils himself to you and takes off the cape yeah. and, and now tells you uh, the, the intimate things, the secrets, the, the, the tough stuff, and you now use it against him. Yeah. He'll never open up again, or it's going to take a two by four to do it. Yeah, right. Because now his his trust has been, um, it, his trust has been abused, has been abandoned in many cases, yeah. uh, to where now he doesn't feel like he can even open up anymore. Yeah. So having a place to where it's it's not coming from judgment, uh, it, it it is, you know, you you provide a, a safe space and place for for Superman to actually land. Yeah. Superman can't fly all day. He's gotta, 
you, you've got to be Clark Kent eventually. Right. Can he do that with you? Yeah. Can you allow him to be vulnerable and, uh, you know, not come from a place of judgment, but actually from a, a place of love and, and, and really embracing who he is, not just what he does? Can you honor him as a person, not just because of his profession? Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me, and I love the actual statement. I mean, cause I know that there's actually truth and validity in it. Um, I've always had this concern and I'm just being honest, you know, you're my friend, right? And I love you, Dr. Eddie. <laughs> I love you, yeah. but I've always had the concern. Um, I actually have experienced divorce in my life. Every, I've spoken about it um, publicly. And one of the things that I just, it was difficult for me to navigate as a woman always being on the giving end of for, um, forgiveness, but never really on the mm. receiving end. And so when you stated that it's very difficult for men to, once you, you know, whether we break that trust mistakenly, intentionally, however it is, it's, it's, it's virtually impossible to get it back. That speaks to me in terms of trust issues. Is there an expectation in society for women to actually continue to forgive and forgive and forgive? And that same expectation, um, same standard, same bar is not placed for men? Is it that they're given a pass because they work so hard and go through so much abuse, the expectation is for women to take it more than them? Why is it that it's so hard for men to recover from things and they expect women to recover easily? It's the it's this quintessential or the same um, conversation where you see men on TV. I just watched a show and he was stating that um, he was like, I cheated on you. Just get over it. Mm. Women don't typically say, I made a mistake in mentioning your mama's faults in your life. Just get over it. We would be crucified. How are we now to teach society to say, we both need to forgive and we both need to heal and we both need to sacrificially love if we're going to make this work? Yeah, I think uh, it. we do have to have those tough conversations of, of where it is that we are. I think, um, you know, you, you refer to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. You're talking about, you know, the, the love chapter. And I think uh, love is patient, love is kind. I think we, you have to get to the place, can I substitute my name for mm -hmm. the word love? Yeah. Um, it, as, as much as we are fragile, as much as we are uh, frail, uh, in regard and our humanity, yeah. Um, I think being able to have the t those tough conversations and, and say, you know what, I love you, but I know I'm not going to always uh, get it right. Right. <laughs> do do you do you have enough wherewithal? Because the thing is, a lot of people can have the intent, but not the extent to go with you. Yes. All the way. Some yeah. people can, you know, they're, they're sprinters. They're not marathon runners. Yes. And so, uh, it, and that that's speaking in the whole aspect of the example of relationships. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I, I think when you, especially when you're talking about the marriage dynamic, counseling is important. Yeah. You know, that, that whole aspect of, of, of getting back to where we were before and, yeah. and building back better, so to speak. Um, you know, is that, but I, I think as well, us as men, we're even more emotionally fragile than you are as women. Right. We won't, many of us won't admit it, but when things do happen, you know, the bottom drops out mm -hmm. because we were never really taught how to handle emotions yeah. to where something can happen and we're triggered. Now we mismanage it. Yeah. And we just go back into our cave and our cocoon. We go to our man cave and we don't yeah. want to be bothered because it's the little boy again who was hurt, who opened up himself. And now he's dealing with emotions that he didn't even realize he had. Yeah. 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 And I love the fact that, I mean, Dr. Eddie, this is so beautiful. And I want to pivot in just a moment. And then I'm, we're going to bring the um, live to an end. 
you know, Kalia um, said, I, shout out to my sister, Kalia. I absolutely love her. Again, to my sister, Danielle, Anisha, all of you guys. Um, Lynn Rowland, you are making some amazing comments in the comment section. This is so phenomenal. Thank you, Dr. Eddie, for being here. You are phenomenal, phenomenal um, exclusive interview. Thank you for sharing us with us, your heart, but also helping us heal during the process. I love when I have conversations with you, no matter where it is and when it is. I always feel like I'm in a full-blown free therapy session. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and getting like this supernatural download that I didn't even know I needed. I'm sitting up here like, I didn't even know, Dr. Eddie, I need it. <laughs> and it's it's pretty phenomenal. Yeah, and I yeah. thank God for who God has made you be. One of the things that um, Kalia stated is that it's learning how to give grace from both sides. I think that mm -hmm. we are taught yeah. that grace is myopic or it's one-sided. Mm. Um, and it is... You know, um, I like to say it's parallel, perpendicular, and horizontal all at one time. It's a rhombus. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm Googling that later on tonight. I'm Googling that. <laughs> You're going to, it's a rhombus. <laughs> and, and so it's, it's oh, all man. of it all at one time. Look at Dr. Eddie's like, let me see. Let me draw that in my head. It's parallel. No, no, no. It's, it's I, I, yeah, it's a rhombus. I, I can't draw it, but I can see it. <laughs> it's a rhombus. So now we're not dealing with it, boxing ourselves in a square. We're not yeah. putting ourselves in this, you know, circle that is an endless hamster wheel. What we're doing is we're allowing ourselves uh, my friend in St. Louis, who has an awesome ministry, he talks about, you know, being stretchy. We're allowing God to define the shape of our lives and how that would look at any given time. Can we handle the form that God is trying to create in us? Or we're going to stick to what we know is uh, familiar. So I love what Kalia said is it's extending grace on both sides. I want to ask you this question before I give you an opportunity and chance to have the um, the last or, or, or final comments. I want to ask this question to you. We've had a lot of stuff in the, the news lately in reference to the, the, the visibility of the lack of integrity around um the combination of businessmen and pastors and leaders. God has blessed you to be, you know, a minister, a very prominent minister and public speaker um, in the church, in the body of Christ. We love that. Shout out to you. Um, you are also a successful businessman um, and you're also a successful author. Um, and obviously you're a child of God. I love it all. It's dynamic. How have you been able to balance that and keep it integral? I minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am also a, a best-selling author um, and I'm also a successful businessman. How have you been able to successfully balance that? Like Paul, I become a many a thing to a many a people and not be known as like a swindler or a hustler or a gamer. And your name has never ended up in the news except for victorious and triumphant stories. I love it, Dr. Eddie. How have you been able to balance that at all? Uh, I, I think it is um, really a balancing of, of, of character and gifting because I, I realize, you know, your gift can take you to the lights, but your character can put you in the basement. Sometimes your gift can take you where your character can't keep you. That's right. Uh, it is like um, Sidney Poitier was talking to a friend of mine some years ago, and um, he he said, uh, um he said, character is like carrying a, uh, a saucer of milk. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not carrying like as a glass, it's not a bowl. You can probably jog a little bit with it, but when you're carrying a saucer, oh. you have to walk so carefully. It's What does the scripture say? Walk carefully and circumspectly, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Woo. And so it's, it's, it's walking so carefully to where you don't spill what God gave you. Yeah. None of us are perfect, recognizing that we are worth it. But but knowing that I got to walk carefully with the gift, I got to walk carefully with my character, I got to walk carefully because I, I'm in a place of leadership to where people are dependent upon what it is that God placed on the inside of me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it is uh, holding yourself accountable. It is moving into a place of, of discipline. I think in life, there's two, t two types of pain. It's either the pain of discipline or the pain of consequence. It's going to be pain either way. That's right. Either I want the, I'm going to deal with the pain of regret 
Yeah. I'm going to deal with the pain of actually doing the right thing. And so uh, I, I think it it is uh, just a clarion call to all of us that uh, no one is uh, immune to controversy, to yeah. to issues and, and woe unto the people who gloat and glory in somebody's downfall. Yeah. Scripture even yeah. talks about uh, that. And so... Uh, uh, just just being able to to know that God has covered everybody. Yeah. He's covered us. Yeah. And uh, uh, just just moving into a place of, uh, yes, walking by faith. Yes, uh, embracing this grace, but not abusing it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I that's, I love that's what it is. So, I um, love it. Yeah. Dr. Eddie, you have been phenomenal. Literally, I want you to be able to, there are some people that are on this live. We have some phenomenal individuals that have come into the room tonight, and we're so thankful to God for them. I mean, people are saying this is phenomenal. This is amazing. I love the analogy that you gave because, you know, I think and I see visually in pictures and stuff. Mm -hmm. So when I'm talking, I can literally see you, and I'm like, I'm walking with my little saucer, and I'm holding on for dear life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding on. Like, I'm, I'm yet holding on, baby. <laughs> We'll keep on keeping on in. Keep on keeping on. <laughs> and so I'm telling you. So yeah. literally, that yeah. was such a beautiful visual for me. I want you to do me a favor. I feel this is a God moment. I feel that God has blessed you to open up people's minds and hearts tonight about healing and repairing relationships, healing hearts, healing the men, the the, the hearts of men, the hearts of women, the, and the relationships. I want you to take a moment to look into that screen and minister to people who are going through challenges in relationships, going through challenges in their families. Maybe it's their careers. They definitely need to um, sign up for your Ego Academy where you address all of this and you help people literally come out of tragedy to triumph so they can soar in purpose. I want you to take a moment to speak to somebody that's broken tonight, they're hurting tonight on that live. Their relationship just fell apart. They just got a diagnosis. Their family is not going the way that they expected. They just got a divorce. They just got a phone call that they were laid off from the job. But God has blessed you to come over, overcome some very traumatic and tragic situations. You've turned tragedy into triumph. Can you minister to them and encourage them tonight and then also let them know how they can access the resources that you have available to them to help them overcome. Absolutely. Uh, to the person who's watching me tonight, listen, I need you to understand this. God didn't just bring you this far to bring you this far. Yeah. They may be able to fire you from a job, but they can't fire you from your purpose. In the midst of all of the brokenness of what it is that you have experienced, God is giving you peace from broken pieces. Yeah. Don't you lose your mind in this situation. You may have lost a home, but don't you lose your mind. You may have lost a relationship, but don't you lose your mind. Because you're going to need your mind for the better home. You're going to need your mind for the better relationship. You're going to need your mind to walk in healing in the midst of sickness. You shall not die, but you shall live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. This sickness is not unto death, but that Amen. the glory of the Lord shall be revealed thereby. This is not your time to quit. Yeah. It's your time to do it. God yeah. didn't give you a gift for you to just sit back and relax on it and not to use it. This is your season to stir up the gift. This is your season to soar and aspire higher and go farther than ever before. This is your time to begin yeah. to recognize that God has given you a gift to move more than to, the, to another level. The tragedy is to be gifted, but to never open the package. That's right. Open your package, open your gift and use it. You're coming mm -hmm. out of depression. You're coming mm -hmm. out of sadness. You're coming mm -hmm. out of suicide. I speak to every gift in you. I speak to the anointing that's on your life. Sometimes mm -hmm. the anointing on your life attracts attacks. Yes. But you got to understand that God has not brought you this far to leave you. That's right. Greatness is on the inside of you. Every demonic attack that has been over your life, we we come against it right now in the name of Jesus. Every uh, evil spirit, every suicide thought, every place that has been torment in yes. your mind and in your life is broken over your life right now.
Yes. I speak freedom. I speak liberty. I speak wholeness. I speak beautiful marriage. I speak relationships that are sustainable. I yes. speak life and that more abundantly over your life. You're coming out better and stronger, bigger and greater. Yes. That is what you went through. Amen. Amen. You'll Dr. See. Eddie, it's, your, it's our season. It's our time. I love you so much, my friend. I so appreciate you. Literally, you saw me holding back them tears. You see my mascara running. Yeah. I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I was like, oh, he's speaking to me of no one else. But this was phenomenal tonight. And I thank God and bless um, God for your life. If you guys haven't already done so, do me a favor. Go to Dr. Eddie's website. Where, what's your website, um, Dr. Eddie? Your um, new website. What's your website? Absolutely. I need them to go right now immediately to the eaglesacademy.com. Yes. I'm empowering you to soar into success and purpose. We do this through a 4G model, God goals, gifts, and greatness. If you enjoyed anything that you hear tonight, you want to get transparent truths. You want to get wisdom uh, that's going to speak to your wounds in our academy sessions. You need to go right there. Tap the join now button when you go to the eaglesacademy.com, www dot the eagles academy dot com tap the join now button become a member you don't want to miss my session that's taking place on wednesday get the monkey off your back yes. how to break burdens that keep you broken yes absolutely. Uh, and of course get the books uh join the join the eagles academy we call you to soar and aspire higher if you spread your wings i guarantee you're gonna win Absolutely. You guys, and his 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 uh, academy is so reasonable and affordable, and he has amazing speakers in there. I've actually been in the actual academy. Yes, um, yes. <laughs> previously you, before. You came and talked about the, the, the fragrance of femininity. I still, That's, right. That's exactly right. We're still reeling off of it. <laughs> but it was yeah. so wonderful, and the students are so amazing. So you really have a community in that actual Eagles Academy. A lot of people have learned to live life alone since the pandemic, and God never intended it. Even the Word of God says in Ecclesiastes, two is better than one. For there we they'll receive more for their labor. When one falls, the other can pick them up. God never intended us to live alone, never intended us to do life alone. So his Eagle Academy is a community of like-minded individuals that are healing, that are growing with the ultimate goal to soar in every area of their lives. You need to go ahead and go to that um, eaglesacademy.com, right? Yes. Yep, so the eaglesacademy.com. Yep. Yep. So they can go ahead and sign on up. And also make sure you get that book, Dear Queen, Volume two, you can go to Amazon and it's on there. It's it's a, literally a best selling book um, on Amazon. And also, I want you guys to get the mask of uh, masculinity. So all of these books are for both men and women, so that you can know how. Yes, absolutely. So you can know how men and women think, what they have actually um, been up against their opposition, but also help you um, identify how you can love them and support them. He's a phenomenal resource, you guys. Um, and also, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and go to Dr. Eddie's um, Facebook, Instagram, follow him. And also, what's your cash app? If you guys have been blessed with this, this is amazing free content. This was a mega masterclass. Go ahead and sow something into Dr. Eddie. It doesn't matter how big or how small. Show them that you love him, that you love him and appreciate him, and that you just want to thank him for the content. Literally, at <laughs> He has blessed us tonight and transformed our lives. And you want to sow into this. He's good ground. And so, Dr. Eddie, what's your actual cash app? Yes. Dollar sign D-R Eddie letter C. Yes. Dollar, dollar sign D-R E-D-D-I-E letter C. Absolutely. Go to his cash app and give him literally some Starbucks money. You know, if you guys want to give him um, money to go to Morton Steakhouse, that's my favorite place. Don't. <laughs> I know people be real and off roof, Chris, but Morton's is mine forever to the grave. And so if you guys want to give him, whether it be literally some Starbucks um, blessing or Ruth Chris or, or Morton Steakhouse blessing or whatever it is, or even some IHOP blessing, he is worthy of all that. So, so into him, so into his life, to let him know how much you care and how much you love him and how much you were thankful for this phenomenal 
phenomenal share tonight. So thank you guys so much for joining that Good Good Talk. Make sure that you click like and click share before you leave the room. That blesses my life to see your comments. I'm going to go back and through and, and literally pan through your comments and respond. This was such a blessing to me tonight. Thank you so much, Dr. Eddie. I love you, my friend. Thank you for being amazing. Not just super fly, but... <laughs> But also just super phenomenal. You always touch my heart and God always blesses me to, to literally see things in a different light, but also heal in a way um, that I never otherwise would do in any environment. So thank you for being real and transparent and so amazing at who God's called you to be and what he's ordained and called for you to do. Shout out to my wonderful uh, friend, Kimberly Scott. She's running for, um, uh, she ran for city council. She's so awesome. Thank you for being in here tonight. I love you, my friend. Thank you, Dejour. Shout out to you. We still need to get together on the West Coast. We're sisters for life. I love you. And all of you all who have joined the live, I want to leave you with this closing remark. I want you all not only to learn and master how to be good to others, but be good to yourself because you can only give to others that which you have given to yourself. Love yourself, believe in yourself, trust yourself, value yourself, forgive yourself because the word of God said, as freely as you have received, freely you give. So if I re freely receive forgiveness, I can give that. But if I never forgive myself for the faults and the flaws and the mistakes I made, I can never extend that forgiveness to someone else. Be good to yourself. This is That Good Good Talk with your host, Shira Lowe. Meet us next time here next week. Same time, same station, same location with another exclusive interview um, with amazing voice in the actual social media space and also across the United States and across this world. We've had some phenomenal guests and we've been blessed and honored. I want you guys to continue to bless them and love them and support them like you usually do. Lynn Rowland, thank you so much. Yes, absolutely. Follow Dr. Eddie. You will always get amazing content that heals, delivers, set free but most importantly encourages. So until next time, God bless you all. I love you all. And thank you so much for supporting me in all the ways that I need. This is how you love me. You show me that you show up and care for me and support me. So thank you so much for doing that. God bless you, Dr. Eddie. Love you so much. I'll be in touch soon. God bless you to everyone that tuned in tonight. Be good to yourself. Be good to others and make sure that you're doing the will of God. Until next time, we'll see you soon. Talk to you later.